Okay, Jim. Reading emails is one thing. Seeing it in real life is another. I'm just now preheating the uh, furnace. I got some pure aluminum in there from other uh, pours where I made ingots. And that's bringing up the temperature. It takes, on my big one, it takes a good half hour, 45 minutes, maybe longer, to get it up. So I got plenty of time to put things together. Here is a flat, bottom and top, dragon coat. Here's the, my baseboard. Flat goes on the baseboard. And usually you just put the first one down, put in about two inches of sand in the bottom, move it out. Now, here is my mold. Now, I sent you pictures of the component parts, so you, you can check back with that. But I started out with three flats and three flats. And then I took up my hole saw, which you're familiar with because you use it all, hole saw all the time. It got me four circles. I glued the circles together with a bolt through the center to keep it straight. And then I just filed and sanded until I got the shape I wanted. I took and glued these three flats together. And then I glued three flats here and then I just filed down a taper on both sides. If I had some silicone cloth, I would pour it across this edge to make a rounded dome, but this is, this is good enough. If you're doing green sand, you can't have voids like this. You would have to fill this in to a radius because the, uh, the sand would get in there it would cause a failure of your casting in that joint. So you do not like sharp edges. You got a radius, even a spike. Uh, when you're doing green ca uh, green sand casting, you will have to bevel the outside edges of your casting just two to three degrees, just to make it release. It also makes it easier to take your mold out of the sand. But because we're doing dry sand and foam, we don't have to worry about that. Now, I know you're looking at this stupid thing and you're saying, what the hell is it? Well, it is a rammer for when you do green sand. Because this is what you use to pound the sand down around your pattern. And you need one. Now, here's another thing you've got to start stocking up on. And I'm sure you can recognize that. Well, paper towel tubes work good, too. Paper towels, toilet paper rolls. Those are your few to go to your ca uh, casting. And they're cheap. And you got plenty of them. Okay. Now, when I put the skew on the mold, I cut a notch so that the skew sits over the unit and down the side. I didn't have any masking tape, so I used electrical tape. No big deal. And then I used Elmer's glue to glue it in place on the top and on the side. Same with everything else here. This is all glued together with Elmer's glue or Elmer's construction glue, carpenter's glue. You can't use uh, super glue because it'll melt the styrofoam. You might want to check at a hardware store and see if they got glue specially made for foam. And they should have because they use it in construction to put foam up against uh, walls in a house. So they've got to have some kind of a glue. I haven't been there yet. Now, I took a file and a knife, 
and I radiated a couple of spots here, that's where my hand's gonna go. Why didn't I go around? Arthritis. My fingers don't move. They don't hold. This way I can hold it better. Okay, back to the mold. Now, I don't know if the camera's picking this up. There's a little dimple over here. And what that is, is this mold is just, just barely big enough for this casting. It should be another two inches bigger in both directions. But we're going to try You put the mold in and very gently just wiggle it back and forth in the sand so it settles in, goes down into your base sand. That way you got no pockets underneath. You got to make sure the mold is all the way down and the sand is coming up around it. If you're in doubt, Take your hand and just slide it in. You don't want big rocks sticking to your mold. Another thing, swipe the uh, wife's sieve, preferably a screen sieve. So when you're reusing your sand, all the lumps get broke up. I can't find mine. I don't know where it went. I can't find it, so I'm doing it the hard way. All right, now, here is clean sand. This is dirty color, and I don't know if the camera's picking it up over on the side. This is dirty color because this is recycled, pre-used, and it's going to get burnt, it's going to get dirty, it's going to get clumpy, so you're going to have to replenish your sand from time to time. Now, you want to gently pour your sand on the side, away from the mold, and then work your way back in, ever so gently, whoop, see now, that bucket, so now I got to wiggle it again, get it back in place, pour that in here. Okay. Looks like I might even have to go down here and get another bucket. I was hoping I would have enough to do this. Now, if I can get the top all the way around, Okay. All right. Now I got luck. Okay. I've got the whole mold covered now. So what I put on top doesn't matter. <laughs> so now I can use my recycled sand with all the lumps in it.
one more tub of, at least one more tub of sand. down and get two more tubs of sand and I'm going to bring this off to a level. Now once I get a level, then I'm going to cut this two blocks so it's flush with the top. Now, how are you going to stop from, how are you going to stop from splashing out of your mold? Right. 